Great. Well, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Um, I'm just, just uh, here presenting on behalf of uh, Dr. Michael Temple, who is not able to attend uh, the meeting. And uh, this work really represents a, a collaborative effort between uh, a lot of centers um, uh, worldwide that are doing uh, uh, osteodosteoma treatment. Um, and uh, we're going to just kind of talk about how we want to use a, a registry as a tool to uh, track that treatment uh, from those treatment. Uh, so today I'm going to provide an overview of uh, two uh, paired registries uh, that have been developed uh, for osteodosteoma. Uh, one is for focused ultrasound, um, and it's supported by the FUSS Foundation. Uh, the other one will cover uh, more broadly uh, percutaneous ablative therapies, uh, which is currently unfunded, but it's uh, administered through the Society for Pediatric Interventional Radiology. Uh, these registries are very similar to each other um, in terms of data collection, um, but they're separate governance boards. Uh, the membership is very different, uh, and the long-term goals of these registries uh, are a bit different, which I'll, I'll talk about later. So unfortunately, I won't have as many um, pretty pictures to show as Professor Napoli, uh, since this is more about data field collection. Um, so we all know that the, the randomized control trial is kind of the gold standard uh, to validate new therapies. It's very robust. Uh, it provides prospective data collection uh, and it has very rigid experimental conditions, which are by design in order to uh, in increase um, the efficacy of the tool. Uh, but they're very expensive to run. Uh, and sometimes that robust conditions are very difficult for things like rare diseases, or when you're introducing new sites that have uh, limited experience. And this issue is more prominent in pediatric medicine where we just don't have the numbers of patients uh, that are seen for adult ind indications. Uh, so registries are kind of an alternative tool that can be used. Uh, they also um, allow you to c collect prospective data, but can also be modified uh, to enable you to uh, um, include uh, previously collected data. Uh, the very observational nature that you can collect a lot of raw data as it's being produced, so patient forms, uh, drug logs, things like that, and they're very flexible and adaptable to change. Uh, and it's a tool that's been that's uh, well-established collaborative multi-center teams have used in the past, uh, such as the Children's Oncology Group, uh, and they can really be used uh, to help you design a future uh, randomized control trial because you can use the registry uh, to see trends early in the data as it's collected. Uh, so we felt that this approach was well suited to kind of new indications, new technologies such as uh, focused ultrasound. As we see at this meeting, there's a lot of applications being uh, researched clinically, uh, but there's far too many of them to be able to tackle immediately with a randomized control trial. Uh, some of them have really few patient numbers. Others have techniques that are still being refined and developed. Uh, and registries, again, are, are a good tool to allow us to collect that data actively, um, uh, and, and we decided at the last uh, focused ultrasound meeting uh, to create a osteodosteoma registry uh, for that purpose. So as uh, Professor Napoli already g uh, gave a background, um, uh, osteodosteomas are very painful but benign bone tumors. They predominantly, <coughs> excuse me, they predominantly affect male patients uh, in adolescence, um, but we've seen them at our center um, as young as about six or seven. Um, and they can pretty much affect any bone in the body, but are, are preferential to long bones and digits. And they can be subperiosteal, cortical, or even deep in the, in the bone marrow. Uh, so there's a lot of different options for treatment for this uh, disease. Um, the earliest techniques were image-guided excision uh, and alcohol injections. Uh, the gold standard now is, is radio frequency and laser ablation. Um, and uh, more recently, um, uh, focused ultrasound has been uh, applied. Uh, so the registry themselves are designed to collect demographic information, medical history, uh, characteristics of the OO regarding imaging, uh, patient reported pain, quality of life, and overall techniques and safety. Um, we're collecting age-based outcome measurements and are currently trying to arrange a data center to allow us to store imaging and treatment data with the overall goal to compare uh, other treatments. Um, so the registry, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, fuss funded for this particular registry. And all the site leads that were listed early on are, um, have governance duties. And the intent is to eventually share that template uh, for other fuss procedures. Uh, both these registries are created in REDCAP, uh, which is 
uh, free to use for nonprofit and is easy to uh, incorporate uh, previous registries as templates. Uh, the key differences are that uh, the FUS site is, is very limited to academic sites that have a lot of experience in this area, and we expect to be able to complete all of the outcome measurements for this. Uh, the, spur site, the spur sites for percutaneous procedures are um, worldwide, uh, and um, we expect a lot more variation in the types of data that will be presented. Uh, just to give a very quick snapshot, we've got nine sites that are currently enrolled or preparing to enroll. Uh, for focused ultrasound and 34 sites that are either uh, in the works for uh, the percutaneous procedure. And uh, just to summarize, um, we are targeting about 150 um, uh, samples for each uh, modality, more for RFA being its common use. Uh, and this was uh, expects to be achieved in about five years. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, both registries are open for enrollment um, and we hope to be able to provide the evidence needed uh, that shows that focused ultrasound is the uh, optimal treatment method for O. Uh, and um, just to, uh, if you're interested in more information about this, uh, Professor Temple and uh, his research assistant, Simul, can uh, be reached at those email addresses. Thank you.